Hello everyone and welcome back to another Lightstep Incident Response video overview. My name is Darius Kumar and I'm one of the product managers here with the Lightstep Incident Response product. And today I want to tell you about alerts and incidents. Two extremely core and fundamental objects when it comes to your incident response product and process. First of all, let's start with a little bit of theory and thinking around why do we have two objects, an alert and an incident, and what's the value in distinguishing the two? So to do so, we need to kind of take a step back and talk about the classic incident response life cycle, which begins with becoming aware that there is a issue or potential upcoming issue in your production environment or in one of your environments. So historically, how you became aware was one of two ways. Either you had observability and monitoring in place and you had a metric defined that breached, causing some kind of an alarm to go off to notify you that, hey, latency is high or uh, the number of errors are too high, right? We call them our classic uh, golden signals, uh, as many of you may have heard of the term. Now, the, the other way you might become aware, which is the less fortunate way, is by users reporting it. You know, all of a sudden, users come and they start screaming, oh my goodness, the system's not working, or the service is down, maybe it's an email from management. Well, in those two scenarios, we kind of have two distinctions. One is you're aware of the issue as it's occurring because your monitoring has thresholds that have been breached. And for that, we create an alert in the system. Our monitoring and observability integrations with systems that you use like Datadog, Dynatrace, Grafana, et cetera, they'll create alerts. And those alerts will allow you to look into them as SREs and, and ops responders to say, is this like a flap or is this something that's just temporary or is this an actual validated issue that I need to start swarming and getting additional team members on? And so you can take that decision either manually to say, Yes, it's a validated issue. I'm going to take that alert and promote it into an incident. Or you can use automated response rules covered in a different video. And you could define logic to say for these type of alerts, automatically just escalate them up to an incident. Say that there's an actual service degradation. And that's the big distinction between the two. An alert is there might be an issue upcoming, impending but the production systems are still good. The environment is still healthy. It's just trending towards an unhealthy state. Whereas the incident is that service degradation becoming a reality and actually being something that is impacting your users, impacting your employees and so on. Our journey though, as I demo it, is gonna begin on the alert side. And while I'm gonna be talking and showing the demo today from the desktop perspective, I will highlight that there's also a native mobile application available on the iOS and Android stores, which will allow you to actually respond to those alerts and incidents directly from your mobile device, seamlessly push that work to your desktop to pick up where you left off, or just make quick updates on the life cycle of that alert or incident from your mobile device. Now, when we come into the application, you're going to find your alerts not only on the home page, also covered in a separate video, where you'll see the current assigned to you active alerts and incidents, but you can see the full list when you head to the alert section on the left hand of the navigation. These alerts, as mentioned, they're going to come in and you're going to get from the list some quick insights in terms of the service that's affected, the priority, if it's been acknowledged or not, aka someone actively looking into it what the state is, the current team assigned, the current user or responder assigned, what the source was, you know, it would show me my, uh, if it was a monitoring integration, it would show me that source, where it came from, this alert, and if there are any related alerts. So we do automated alert grouping based on the service that's affected and recency. And so if we see multiple alerts coming in from the same source, like let's say a data dog affecting the same service, then we'll automatically group those together for you. And you could read our documentation to get the exact details on how those pre-built algorithms work. And finally, you'll see a related incident field. So if an incident had already been created for that alert, let's say automatically as part of a response rule, or maybe a different technician on your team got around to promoting it, and is working on that incident before you actually got a chance to triage and look into that alert, 
you'll immediately become aware because you'll see that incident linked here on the list view. Now you could search for alert alerts, you know, by a text-based search. You could apply a filter and sort them by priority or number for recency. And you can also filter them right on if they're open or if they're closed to get to that full historical backlog if you wanted to. In our case, so let's focus on these open alerts. Uh, I can take a look directly from this list view, also getting a flyout of all the detailed information that I would find if I open up the full record. And that helps me just immediately do a quick mental triage, right? From this flyout, you're gonna see the header on the alert, which will tell you the short description, the description, as well as when the issue was opened, AKA impact detection, what the time to acknowledgement was, how long did it take a user to acknowledge? If it's been acknowledged, in this case, we could see it hasn't. The amount of time that's elapsed from it being opened and the priority. I can also scroll down here and see within the details, more nuanced information. What's the service? What's the assigned team? What's the user that's currently assigned? Is there a parent alert? You know, if automated grouping took place, I would only be seeing the parent alerts in this list. What is that source where it came from? Is there a linked incident? And then from your monitoring integration, you might get more technical information, such as what's the resource? What's the node? What's the metric name that breached? What's any additional JSON payload that may have come through from that monitoring integration? Is there a message key so you can follow up and use that as you look back in through the logs or traces, et cetera? And so you get those quick details. Now, from this list, you can also take actions. So you can click in and then take an action such as acknowledging in line, closing multiple alerts in line, manually grouping if you wanted to, or promoting the alert to an incident all through these inline actions. In my case though, I'm gonna go ahead and open this given record here and open the form. So here is my alert form. It's broken up into two distinct panes by default. On the left-hand side, I have my details, which were those fields that I was talking about. And on the right-hand side, we have what's referred to as our alert timeline. So anytime users are making updates, the system is taking automated actions, you'll be able to scroll through and see that history of what's been happening through that timeline there. What you can also see is that on the far right, you have these additional options where you can see attachments, if any have been added, and distinctly all the collaborators on this current record. And so in many cases, you don't wanna work on this by yourself. You can add additional users in as, let's say, co-responders that while you may be the primary that is working on this given alert, you can still loop in additional resources to help here. And so on the alert, it's still very technical on the diagnosis stage where you're identifying, is this something that's impactful? And you can initiate collaboration either automatically via response rule or manually here by pressing start Slack or just start Zoom, you know, as another option. And you could dynamically invite either a static set of users or users from the record, like your on-call user, your assigned user, uh, or the responder list, you know, these responders you added just directly here through that integration. And it'll automatically, you know, open it up. It'll push you out to that uh, system. In this case, it was Slack. And then I could continue my collaboration there. In my workflow though, as alerts come in, let's talk about the workflow of alerts. So alerts, when they first are opened up by your monitoring integration, or maybe you're using a uh, just a generic web API, we do have REST endpoints to create alerts as well. Or maybe you're using our CLI. We do have a CLI from which you can create uh, alerts as well. And that's for some automated infrastructure uh, automation you may wanna do, create an alert from a script and so on. But in this case, uh, I'm here on the form from this alert that came in from the monitoring. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna acknowledge it from this view. Now that's automatically gonna set who acknowledged it, what time it was acknowledged at, you know, we're gonna see those updates happening in the timeline. And so from that lifecycle perspective, it was new and open, unacknowledged when it first came in. Then a user manually acknowledges it, or if you just wanna snooze it, get rid of it, you can set up a response rule to auto acknowledge and just kind of close it, auto close it too, kick it out to the back for archiving. But by default, if you have to work it, you have to notify users, then that alert is gonna get opened up and based on the priority and the escalation policy set on the team, 
check out the separate video for team setup and escalation policies. That'll define who actually is getting the phone that's getting rung. And then on your profile, you're defining where are you receiving those notifications. So you're aware of the alert. You've acknowledged it as a user. You know, maybe you've done it here through the interface on the desktop, which I'm showing. Maybe you've done it through your mobile device, but you could also even come in and update and work these records from something like Slack using slash commands. But we'll cover that in a separate video. So from a lifecycle side, I'm now looking into this latency on shopping cart issue. I can see that the system automatically grouped here this tab for related alerts. This will show me manually or automatically grouped alerts that are under this parent alert. I'll also be able to understand if the system executed any response rules based on that automation that uh, we covered separately. I would be able to understand that context and say, okay, the system did all this for me already. But in my case, I could just understand there's related alerts, there's no automation or response rules that run. I'm gonna go ahead and promote this to an incident. So we are now in the incident record. The incident record is a record that is generally stakeholder facing, and it's a bit more impactful. You're gonna bring more users in. And so in collaboration, not only do you have responders, but now you may also have stakeholders. We may need to bring in, you know, uh, customer and client management teams. We may need to bring in our executives and keep them all appraised as to the updates that are happening. And so now I have my technical responders helping me with technical resolution. We're communicating using work notes, which are your technical team notes making technical updates. But then the business users, AKA, you know, the stakeholders that are probably asking for updates that they want to get back to the customers, you'll be able to interface with them through these more public comments. And so, you know, uh, ETA 10 minutes looking into work around. And that update is gonna go also to my stakeholders, you know, more publicly here, as opposed to maybe a technical update that is looking into a log, et cetera, that I only wanna care about sending to my technical responders here. So the responders will be the ones that see those as opposed to the non-technical stakeholders that are more of just in the loop, being appraised and so on. Something I'll mention though is you still have the same collaboration opportunities to create a Slack channel, to create a Zoom bridge if you want to get kind of that war room style on there. You'll understand where this incident came from, if it was promoted from an alert or if it was uh, created automatically through a response rule, you'll understand that. And here, all those alerts, you know, the one I promoted and the related ones, they'll all show up here as context that the team could use as they're working on remediating this given incident. I could make changes to the short description and description if I want to uh, by clicking in here. Maybe I learn more information and I'll say only North America is impacted. I'll be able to apply that update there. But really I'm working the life cycle, right? And I'm doing that through these actions at the top. It was new when it came in and it was created. Now that I'm actively working it, we're moving it to work in progress. We're having the collaboration. And then once I update my stakeholders that the fix looks good, we're gonna go and we're gonna resolve it from our end, right? Because we think as a technical team that it looks good, we're gonna say, you know, the latency cleared up by resizing the DB and adding load balancing. And so now I'm resolving it. And just like that, you know, we've taken this issue from an alert that came in, gained the context from the grouped alerts, and we turned it into an incident, we interfaced with business facing stakeholders, and now we're able to go ahead and move it either to a closed state, which generally at this point, I might be in a post-mortem process with my team talking about how do we prevent this from happening again and so on. Um, but I can also reopen it if the business facing team says, no, my users are still facing the issues. So let's pretend it was a success. The post-mortem was created and we're going to go ahead and close that. So a uh, great life cycle. Uh, hopefully it was quite clear in the distinction between the alert, which is more of the informational signal that something may be wrong in the incident, which is the validated issue of a service degradation that impacts your customer facing users and you need to bring in stakeholders. Uh, that nuance makes sense. And the post-mortem process is generally tied to the incidents as well, not so much to the alerts that are a bit higher in frequency and can open and close. And so, with that, that covers the life cycle and working from alerts to incidents here in the UI. 
Last update I'll say is you can kind of morph what details you see through this layout panel here. So the area that's most important to you on what you're working can be done. You can also adjust what you're viewing in terms of the timeline. If there's specific types of updates you're interested in, you could filter down on those to get just to those updates. It'll help you create your postmortems uh, and these other documents on post analysis on what happened, what were the updates, what were those critical things that, that went wrong or went right. And importantly, as mentioned, while I showed you the demo today on the web perspective, you have a lot of control on mobile as well and on Slack through slash commands, and we'll be covering those in separate videos. I hope this was helpful. Please let us know if there's any questions, put them in the comments, and we hope to see you in another video soon.